what we want to do is align our habits. What we want to do is align our mind. What we want to do is align our spirit. What we want to do is align our energy. You know, you are a four-dimensional being. Mind, soul, body, and energy. A lot of the confusion that we experience in this physical form in this dimension is when we don't have those things in line and they're moving in different directions. The four dimensions of our being are not in harmony and that leads to um, confusion, calamity, uncertainty. That leads to um, stress, you know, um, not moving within the power of our attentions, which is what we were, which is the, 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 the superpower, if you will, that, that we were given is to have intention and be able to force our intention um, repetitively to where you create a momentum and create what you desire. So we was given that superpower and a lot of us leave it at home every day. A lot of us don't, don't use it. We're just going with life. The way that life comes with us, the things that life brings our way, we're just reacting to that. You're living a reactionary life. Um, that's much like just playing defense. In any sport, in any game, in any competition, that's 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 a lot like just playing defense. And that means all you're doing is reacting to what's coming your way, and you're not actually making moves based off of where you want to be. You're making movements uh, based off of what has came to you, and so of course that doesn't further your cause the same way. So what I want to teach you and give you, leave with you today in these few minutes that I have with you is the understanding that there's a difference between a reaction and a response. I'm going to break it down for you real simply. A reaction, like I said, a reaction is you, um, you making a movement and a judgment based off of whatever just took place. Okay? Now, a response is making you making a movement and a judgment based off of what your original agenda is. You see the difference? One, I'm dealing with what came my way. And another one, I'm dealing with what came out of my mind. What I seen, what I projected, what I wanted it to be prior to, you know, prior to this last thing taking place. And it's so important when things come your way that have, especially when they have the ability to take you off your path, to choose a response versus a reaction. Reactionary living is only going to keep you behind the ball. It's never going to give you the opportunity to be in front of it. And before you know it, you know, we're creatures of habit. So you're going to create a habit of just re reacting to things. And then we also have this thing in our mind that tells us that just because something happened, you have to feel a way about it. You have to assign a meaning to it and then feel a way about it. We don't suffer and deal with the problems often. We're dealing with the meanings that we created in our mind that these things mean. We're dealing with the attack on the identity that whatever took place, um, puts out. But the existential truth is you have power because you have the power to choose which way you're going to handle the situation. And power is the ability to keep your agenda. Power is the ability to remain effective. Power is the ability to resist resistance. Power means that if even if things go wrong, you can make them go right. So are you walking in your power or are you complaining that things ain't going right? You can only do two things. One of, one of two things. You can, you can serve your ego. You can serve your purpose. You know, you can use your power for good or you can choose to lay it on the dress every morning. There's a lot of people that go through life not use it, utilizing their power for various reasons, whether they believe somebody else got it or that they don't have it. Or they're waiting on somebody in the sky to just come and rain down with their power. Whatever it is, people be leaving their power at home. Their ability to do better, be greater, and accomplish the things that they want. And so they, we get in this mentality where we start constructing habits that work against us and don't work for us. You got to know how powerful your habits are. Habits have destinations attached to them. Okay, your habits are either going to grant your dreams permission to grow and to manifest or they will be the reason your aspirations will struggle to breathe and eventually cease to exist. Now, there's plenty of examples all the way around you about good habits and bad habits and the results that they yield. 
Uh, but once you decide what you want, you must examine your daily routine and habits to see if they align with it. Identify what is creating a bridge to the promised land that you desire and what is creating a barrier around where you currently are. Now, as powerful as your habits are, you have complete power over them. And I want you to walk in that. I want you to understand that. And I want you to walk in that on a daily basis because you already know what you want to, where you want to be and what you want to do. But what are your habits saying? What are your habits saying about where you're going in life? What are your habits saying about what you're going to be accomplishing? What are your habits saying about where you'll be next year? So you have complete power over them. If you use it, if not, your habits is going to take you to the destination that they're assigned to. So ask yourself today, what could you be doing? What could you be doing? What habits could you switch up that's going to get you to your destination faster? What could you start doing today to improve your lifestyle, more align yourself with the desired destination? Better yet. What could you let go of today that is going to align yourself, your lifestyle with the proper destination? Because it's something. It's definitely something that you have the opportunity to uh, to release. What are you releasing? What are you letting go of? Are you still being the same you? The same toxic you? The same version of you that you keep making excuses for? To not be that greater version of you. What are you releasing? What are you going to lay at the altar of your life and say this will no longer be in existence? Because in order to get to this new version of you, you're going to have to crucify the current version of you. But hey, if you're not willing to, then, you know, make the best of what you can with what you get. But don't complain about it. Don't complain about it because you have absolute power and ability to make your life what you wanted to make, what you what you wanted to be. But the fact of the matter is you wanted to be given to you rather than you getting it. You do a little bit and then you complain. Don't you know that that pushes away the, the additional blessings that will be coming your way? Because you you prayed to get to this higher level. So so now you get a little bit of progress and that requires a little bit more work, a little bit more accountability. And you complain Universe, ancestors, God, Holy Spirit, whoever you believe in, it's like, oh, okay, so that must be too much for you. That's what you asked for. That's what you said you wanted, so I gave it to you. It must be too much for you. Let me take something off your plate. And now you're sitting here wondering why why the money ain't coming how, how I used to, why the, why you can't get, get no get no real friends that's really caring about you and is going to listen to you and, and help you, you know, where you should. Now you're, you're looking around life and saying, well, damn. Well, I don't have what I want because it was coming your way and you was complaining about that shit. You was complaining about the work. You was complaining about the effort. You ain't want to get aligned with your destiny and goals. You still want to be aligned with the bullshit that you was that you need to be out of alignment, out of alignment with. So what are you willing to let go of? What are you willing to let go of so that you can receive the things that are supposed to be in your life? Your hands, your hands is too full to get that thing that you say you want. Just like a runway. I don't know, you know, I fly like, there'd be times where the plane got to keep circling around the airspace of the airport because the runway's too crowded. Your mind be like that sometimes. Your mind be too crowded for the right thoughts to land. Your life be like that too sometimes. Too crowded for the right things to land in your life. The things that you're asking for, things that you're preparing for. If you're preparing for them, make space, make room for them. That also requires moving things out of your dimension, out of your way, out of your life that do not need to be there. People tend to think that creating the life that you desire 
has so much more to do with building and putting things in your space than it does being exclusive and removing things out of your space. An environment of lack rarely creates an environment of abundance. Can we agree on that? Okay. So then in the same exact way, an environment that has self-doubt, disbelief, indecision will never lead to an environment of self-belief, self-respect, self-power, self-love, self-discipline. So who's responsible for this environment? Who's responsible for it? Is it you? I think so. And if you're willing to take control of your life, you're going to find just how true that is. That you do have the power to create the reality that you desire. That you do have the power to manifest the things that are within your mind and put them in your possession. You do have the ability to turn a thought into a thing and allow that thing to be great in this dimension and bring blessings to your life. You also have the power to miss your opportunities. You have the power to burden, restrict, and end the relationships and connections that could have taken you to your next level. You got the power to sink your ship. It's all on, depend upon what you're choosing to do with your energy with your intention and the harmony that you can obtain between your mind, body, soul, and energy. Listen, I love y'all. The life I wouldn't water you if I didn't want you to grow. Click the link in the bio, go to brianhiplight.com, grab your copy of Manifesting You 111 Keys to Unlocking Your Divinity. There's also the Manifest Pack that is on sale as well. That's only $111 and that includes the book in all of its forms, paperback, audio uh ebook it gives you my affirmation audio set absolutely free the 36 class manifesting you course purpose finding tools and, and, and self-identification assessments and one free month at manifest university so all that's available uh to you take advantage of it look forward to uh building with you but i gotta go because i gotta go get with mu and so we can go through our daily uh elevation you know what it is i love you to life i wouldn't water you if i didn't want you to grow a rising tide raise our boats Join Manifest University as soon as you get an opportunity so we can help you take your life to the next level.